Good morning, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to harvest rose hips, when to harvest them, and what to do with them. So I'm out early in my garden this morning and this is a Patreon request video from my friend Dot. So Dot, if you're watching, hi! <laughs> and uh, last night we definitely had a frost. You can, if I pan, you can see we've got our beans covered and we covered a bunch of lettuces that we sowed too because, you know, silly us, we thought we might be able to have a fall garden this year. But, uh, you know, it is not quite working out that way, but that's all right. And right behind me, these beautiful dots of red that you see are my rose hips. So the question came in from uh, one of my Patreon followers, when do I harvest my rose hips? You can harvest them as soon as they're ripe. There's really no wrong time, I mean, other than them not being ripe, to harvest your rose hips. But the benefit of waiting until after a first frost means that the sweetness factor increases. And because rose hips are loaded with vitamin C, which is why we want to either grow them or forage for them, um, it does make them kind of tart. So if you want to wait until after that first frost, it will increase the sweetness factor, which is what I've done. Now that means that I have missed out on a few. Uh, some of my rose hips were ready quite a bit earlier and I'm okay with that. I'm pretty swamped this time of year. Uh, you know, trying to get um, food put up, especially because we've had early frosts, we've had to harvest everything all at once. So I was all right with losing a few rose hips you now and sacrificing them to the birds. But this morning I will come out and get the vast majority of them. So what to do with your rose hips? One of the simplest things to do would be to dry them. And once we get back inside, I'll show you how to do that. But it would be to dry them and to enjoy them in tea all winter long. Rose hip tea is quite delicious and lovely. But some of the things that I'm going to be doing with mine, the first thing I'm going to be doing is infusing it into a carrier oil to make a rose hip infused oil. If you have ever used my Frankie Rose whipped body butter, or if you've ever used my nourishing face oil, then you have experienced rose hip infused oil firsthand. The vitamin C properties are fantastic for the skin. I also hope to make a batch of rose hip honey this year. I really like the idea of infusing it into honey and then I can enjoy that honey in a variety of different things, including baking and teas and hot chocolate and all those types of wonderful warm winter beverages that we like to enjoy. You could make a syrup. There's lots of recipes online for making rose hip syrup and this could be like a vitamin C supplement for you for the winter months. You could make rosehip jam or jelly, and I even found a recipe for rosehip mead. So that might be happening. We'll see. So what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around and show you the rosehips and talk about how to harvest them, which is really quite simple. So here are my Rugosa roses. I wasn't able to source any wild rose plants and when I went to the local nursery I spoke to a really super awesome gentleman there who was talking to me about Rugosa roses and after doing some research I found out that these, as far as cultivated roses go, these are as close as we can get to wild roses. Now what do you need for harvesting? Scissors and a bowl. I should probably have my gloves but I'll give this a whirl without it because as you can see just like all roses every rose has its thorn but these are the rose hips so this is the fruiting body that is that forms after the flower dies and the petals drop so I definitely recommend growing roses of all kinds because you can also do a lot with the rose petals see look how many there are and as you can see some of them you see that one in the back there? As long as it's not moldy or rotten, like I will take this one. But some of them have, you know, um, I miss them, like I said in the earlier part. And just as a note too, I'm having some technical difficulties with my audio this morning. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. See like this one right here, I won't take. So I'll just leave and let it drop its seeds. But all you want to do is use your scissors 
and snip right about there. And then the rest of the work we will do inside. So I'm going to get to harvesting. As you can see, I have quite a few of them to get. And then I'll meet you inside in my kitchen where it's quite a bit warmer. And I'll show you how to prep them for drying. All right, so I'm back in my kitchen. Check out the bumper harvest. Fantastic. And they're all in different stages of ripeness. Not all of them are quite ready and some are a little overripe. And I'm fine with that because I can pick through them and decide which ones I want to infuse into oil and which ones I will be using for other tasty treats. So what you want to do once you have your rose hips in your house is you want to cut the end off here. And I've got always got a little bowl off to the side for the chickens. And I'm going to take the stem off too, so I'll cut the other end off as well. And if with your scissors you cut really close to the end of the rose hip, then you won't have a problem. You're then going to want to cut them in half because when you dry them, as you can see, they've got lots and lots of seeds inside. So you're going to want to get those out. And what I found that has worked the best is to just take a butter knife and I just scoop all the seeds out. And it kind of mangles the, uh, <laughs> the rose hip a little bit, but I don't want to keep the seeds in there. So depending on what you're going to do with them, uh, if you plan on drying them for tea, you'll need some kind of a drying rack of some kind. I have, um, like from my dehydrator rack, I'm just going to be placing them on there like this. If you're going to be infusing them in oil, you're also going to want to allow some of the moisture to come out unless you really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, rose hips have quite a bit of moisture, just like most fruit. If you're going to be uh, making rose hip honey or syrup or mead or maybe some other delicious tasty treats like that, um, you can use them fresh just like this. You don't have to wilt them or dry them at all. So it really depends on what you're going to be doing. I'm gonna be doing a variety of things, including infusing a bunch in oil, making some bath salts, and uh, ingesting some, probably in the form of a honey or a mead. So I will want to dry the ones for oil at least a little bit. So it's a tedious job, someone's gotta do it, right? So you wanna get all those seeds out and again, place them on your trays. I'm gonna to get to finishing my rose hips here, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank you so very much for watching this video, taking some time out of your day to join me on my herbal adventures. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you're harvesting rose hips this year, can you let me know what you're doing with them? Or maybe you have some traditional recipes that you do every year. Please comment below. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.